And now, Podtendo presents Side Quest Cinema. Hey guys, welcome to the Pod Tendo Podcast, uh, where we analyze, reminisce, replay the glory of old Nintendo games. This is a side quest cinema mini review, which means we're just going to get down and dirty, talk about these games. We're not going to have our regular fluff. This is just a movie review. So if you're t- tuning in, this is Mortal Kombat 1, like the original 1995 one, and Mortal Kombat Annihilation review. I'm your co-host, Mick, and I'm joined every episode by my lovely and talented co-host, Tyson. Nice, nice. So it's good stuff, right? Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that's that's the best part. If you know that part, or you just want to listen to the song, you know the best part of all these movies. So good job. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I think you uh, you can just listen to the the soundtrack on YouTube for free and just be like, I'm there, and I' gonna mm-hmm. live in this rose tinted world. Well, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So cool. So I think we have to do a couple things though before we talk about these movies in full and share our experiences with you. Uh, but as we were playing through the game earlier this summer, uh, Mortal Kombat, we thought, I mean, you kind of have to watch the movies, right? Like we watched movies historically on this channel or on this whatever we call this podcast. So let's let's keep the good times rolling and talk about some fun movies. Switch some things around. I don't know what our original lineup was, but it's been altered. And so far, I think we're doing an excellent little job. I like when it kind of we organically get into things. So, Mortal Kombat. It was directed by Paul Anderson, distributed by New Line Cinema. It was released August 18th, 1995. The runtime is 101 minutes. The budget was $18 million. At the box office, it drew in one. $122.2 million. That's a great return. The cast included Lyndon Ashby as Johnny Cage, Carrie, How- oh. Carrie Hiroki Tawaga as Shang Tsung, Robin Shu as Liu Kang, Christopher Lambert as Lord Raiden, and Bridget Wilson as Sonya Blade. Ugh. You know, this, this original cast, it's not so bad. Yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I think you get some hammy, cheesy acting going on, but I think you just get that in every Paul Anderson movie. Yeah. Like, I can't think of a yeah. movie that he's done where it's like, oh, wow, this person's giving a serious, respectable performance. It's usually it's just uh, cheese fest. I mean, in all fairness, the Resident Evil movies are, like, kind of what I know him best from, and I think they're just, like, cheesy, weird movies, so... Yeah, that's basically all he's done. And the Event Horizon. Oh yeah, maybe? Event Horizon. Yeah, I, sh- I should go watch that. Maybe that's what I'll watch later while I'm playing Zelda. Yeah, anyway, so on to the development details of this game. So movie producer Lawrence Kazanoff was playing Mortal Kombat in an office when he first saw the potential for making this game into a film. After months of negotiations, he finally acquired a limited option on the Mortal Kombat film rights. Anderson was chosen to direct due to his film, Shopping. He had no experience with visual effects, but was enthusiastic about making the film. Well, that's it. That, that's good. You need directors with enthusiasm. Cameron Diaz was originally cast as Sonya Blade, but dropped out due to a wrist injury. Wilson had accepted a role in Billy Madison after being initially passed up, but she flew out to the set the day after, or the, the morning after, wrapping on Billy Madison was complete. Her martial arts training occurred during downtime on the film. The Sonya vs. Kano fight was the last thing filmed to give her the most time to train. The only injured or injury reported was the intense Oh, the only injury reported during this film from all the intense fight scenes was a bruised kidney. There was like some minor like dislocated shoulders and bruised ribs, but nothing major. Goro was portrayed by an elaborate $1 million animatronic and was operated by 13 to 16 puppeteers. The guy in the suit could only be on on film for two minutes due to a lack of oxygen. Filming began in August 1994 and ended in December 1994. A filming occurred in California and Thailand. Thailand, not Thailand. Uh, Anderson encouraged the actor to ad-lib most of the film's dialogue. And they wanted the film to be PG-13, so they tried to clean up the language and keep the violence to a minimal. For instance, PG-13 forbids on-screen deaths 
uh, but only of human characters. So all of the deaths of non-human characters take place on screen. How are those for some fun, fun development details? That's interesting. Um, man, I feel sorry for that dude in the Goro suit because, I mean, two minutes being like, and two minutes, <laughs> and go. Okay, now lighting. Yeah. Get quiet on the I, set. I mean, I mean, that guy's it, just like, yeah. oh, my God. I mean, it, like, it, you, it's not two minutes and he's dead. It's just they filmed for two minutes due to the lack of oxygen. Yes, right? so like, but I mean, like, 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 yeah. That, that, so that means that that dude was probably sitting there just like, yeah. Every every scene, just being like, okay, now take that suit off, and it's like, oh, God, now I gotta dive again, and it's like, it's yeah, like you're doing it. It's like you're filming an underwater scene, mm-hmm. the whole movie. Yeah, um, pretty much. Very cool. That like, could you imagine if we had Cameron Diaz in this movie? Oh my goodness, this movie would have been like had twice the box office. I swear, <sighs> she was such yeah, a huge right? like. She was such a huge star at that time. It's like, oh my God, could you imagine had they. And the only reason she dropped out, not because she was like a conflict or didn't want to do it. It's like a wrist injury. It's like, holy fuck. This movie, this movie could have been like so good. And don't get me wrong. Like, I think Bridget Wilson does a great job as Sonya Blade. And she's one of my favorite parts. Um, that being said, the Anderson encouraging actors to ad lib the film's dialogue really speaks volumes to my criticisms of this. So cool interesting yeah i i I almost yeah i don't have a complete opposite take of what you just said but kind of sort of i mean i agree with the cameron diaz that's kind of neat apparently she received a lot of physical training for her work in the mask so her like dance scene with jim carrey uh so that's they were like oh you've already got all this training you come in we can just like teach you a couple things so it does show like her fight scene is not great Let's put it that way. So, anyways, no. you know, like when when you know that she isn't as skilled as the others, and you watch her fights, you're like, "Oh, I get it. Yeah, that makes sense." Yeah. Well, I think that kind of comes problem with the plot later on. So. Yeah. But I mean, I do have to admit, she definitely has a nice rack, nice rack, nice rack, nice rack. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> on to our bit, terrible Billy, Ma- Billy Madison reference. Yeah, there you go. That's on to a, a terrible plot summary. This is a long one. <clears throat> we meet our trio of heroes. Liu Kang, who is visiting some monks in China and claims he wants to avenge his brother's death. Sonya Blade as she tracks down a crime boss, Kano. And Johnny Cage as he suffers through a tough day on a movie set. Aww. Uh, they are all invited to attend a martial arts tournament. They board a great-looking boat, travel on a river, up some stairs before... Uh, gathering for a feast. Sonya kills Kano. John- Johnny beats Scorpion. Liu Kang defeats some guy, Sub Zero, and draws with Princess Katana. The current champion, Goro, takes then takes the stage, defeats who I actually believed was the main character, Art Lean, and was really sad when Art Lean died. And I was like, oh no, not Art Lean. Oh, please don't let it be so. Uh, is then killed by Johnny Cage, but in the meantime, Sonya is captured. And turns from badass bitch to damsel in distress. Kang and Cage head to Outworld to challenge Sang Sung to mortal combat. Kang wins and the heroes celebrate until the Emperor shows up. Yes, yes. This, I mean, it's a pretty typical, like, martial arts movie. Or uh, martial arts tournament. The movie. So I yeah, see how like they, they were looking at like Mortal Kombat and being like, yeah, this is super applicable. Like, I mean, I think Bloodsport came out a few years before this um, and has a lot of similar things going on. And in my mind, yeah. it's like, uh, you know, I don't want I, to, I, I try not to praise Paul Anderson, but it's, uh, you know, as the story goes, it, it, it works. I mean, there's a couple like problematic issues, like, Art Lean being introduced only to be killed, and then Sonya uh, being like just her entire character just takes a shift in the third act, just like, and you're no longer that person. You're now Princess Peach. It's like, what? Wait, what? <sighs> yeah. So my notes are written after my first watch through on Thursday night. Friday night, I rewatched this film. Every all my criticisms are kind of gone from this movie. Like, I've had a complete 180 on my opinions and thoughts, and I think this movie might be one of the most genius movies ever made. 
Wow, that's that's very high praise. So yeah, we uh, we're definitely I, yeah, different on this one. All right, so I'm going to explain it to you and like see if I can just or at least show you what like where I'm coming from and like how I'm watching this film. I mean, it, yeah, we'll go from there. So like into our classic side quest cinema review. So we start out with our favorite part. So what is your favorite part of this movie? The soundtrack. All right, like like the just the it starts with Mortal Kombat. The doo -doo, mm -hmm. doo -doo, doo -doo. Like that song is still that song was like I mean. There was people in high school that I would never expect to be like gamers, gamers. And then you would just hear them say, like, yell that out one time. And you're just like, what the heck do my, my witnessing? Like, did you just, yeah. you let your nerd out of the closet? Like, that's beautiful. I'm so happy right now. It, in terms of pop, pop, pop cultural significance, the song Mortal Kombat, everyone knows about it. It was on a techno CD somewhere like this and Sandstorm. If you've never listened to any techno music in your life, you know about Sandstorm, you know about Mortal Kombat, and that's kind of its like claim to fame, right? Now I want to listen to Sandstorm. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Boom, boom. Uh, anyway, so my favorite part, so I'm going to read you my notes, and then I'm going to tell you why I'm an idiot. So, I love how accurate this movie is to the game. The first 45-ish minutes is awesome, it makes sense, it holds up visually, then Goro dies, and the movie kind of gets dumb. That is that is false, because this movie is a genius account from start to finish. I think my favorite part of this movie is... Let's go, I'm going to go with the Goro puppet. I'll just do that one thing. Uh, he looks good. I think the fact they did it practically, it holds up. Yeah, his mouth movement isn't great. But other than that, like, he moves around. He fights. You know, uh, it looks better than it would with CG. Because we see CG in maybe other parts of other movies that we're talking about today. And they look absolutely horrific. So this part is freaking cool. It's awesome. It's great. Do you want me to just get into it now? Yeah, or as well. How about my praise? I'll, how about I end with it so we can kind of get like okay. your honest okay. opinion of it right and then we can kind of talk and like rebuttal on praise so we'll do it that way right so just i yeah let, let's let's go so the most memorable scene or part so some of mine so the dragon boat in the hong kong harbor kano's australian accent which then became canon in future games the goro puppet the scorpion fight or the mortal Kombat theme yeah um I, I so do. sorry. Most memorable scene or part is that that section. You haven't watched this this movie for a while. It's like months later, days later. You just left the theater, and it's the part you want to talk about with your friends that like stands out the most in your mind. So that's kind of what that that this this section is. Yeah. Um. And I mean, those are all great points. I like the Goro pup or puppet is the thing that like I'm. They did such a good job with. It's so strong. I mean, I I freaking hate. I do not like CG. I it's one of those things where I I like it less and less and less. Like I just watched um, King Kong versus Godzilla, and I look at that movie and I'm like, this looks trash. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. this movie just came out and looks like shit. Yeah. Um, whereas it's like, yeah. no, 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 no. There is a time and a place. So the T Rex attack in Jurassic Park merges, so it enhances. So they use CG to enhance the animatronic, right? So yeah. there's a part where you see him in the window, you see his head pop up. And then as he's walking, so the head is real and the walking is CG. It enhances. That's what CG, it should enhance your movie, but it should not be reliant on it, right? You're like, oh man, he turned into a giant dragon. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, yeah. we'll get to that. Um, yeah. And then I, I, I think and like a lot of the, where CG can really just fail, fall on its face and really pull you out of a movie is just the blending between like the background and the foreground. Mm -hmm. If not handled correctly, just sticks out like a sore thumb because the the color, the shading, the lighting is off, yeah. and you just like look at it and you're like, "There's clearly that's they're they're clearly on a set right now," and it's like, yeah, just pulls you right out of it. So, and the Goro fight is so cool because it's a dude fighting another dude in a, in a suit and a puppet. So it, like you actually it, there's there's weight things have weight things have proper color shading you. It, it's kind of funny when he falls off the cliff and does the like arm waving thing or whatever, but it's like you can't really do that uh, elsewise. Yeah. Like you're not going to drop this million dollar puppet off a cliff and see how it looks, but because that's how you would do that practically. So like, I'll give uh, you no, a pass. they actually so they okay. they they, they kind of put him down and they blew wind in his face. So it looked like he was falling, mm. and they like had him laying on his back and like moving his arms, but then they just 
like used a reducing effect on like the the editor, right? So he just kind of like gets smaller as he falls down. Yeah, but, like they actually, and that's did... that's the part that yeah. I'm talking about. Like that's clearly yeah. just been like altered. Yeah, and it's like that. But but they used the, the the CGI to enhance the practical, right? So they actually had this guy on this table and they filmed him and he went, Aah! and then they just like shrank him. So they used the CGI to enhance it. It, it, it works, I guess, and it doesn't work, right? Versus, like, just making a CG guy fall off the building. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I get you. I get you. And yeah. I think that the emphasis put towards the actual practical effects work, and they stand out. Like, the costumes, yeah. fant- fantastic. I think everybody yep. looks cool. Kano looks cool. Mm-hmm. Scorpion Sub-Zero, really awesome. When they freeze that dude, even cooler. It's, like, makes you, like, you know jazz to see what's coming and i think that the the world and the set that they created is is very very neat and i think that's like they, it, not a lot of other it's such a little thing that can kind of just kind of go without because it's easy just to throw money at a costume where yeah. the, they didn't have money to throw at costumes so they needed them to be good appropriate and like looks like clothes not just like somebody's wearing some costume they pulled off a rack yeah, so. no, true, true. Okay, um, my I guess mine, I, Mortal Kombat theme song, obviously, the Tyson's favorite part, my most memorable. We both like the puppet. There you go. How about on to some negatives? We're going to be negative here for the next two sections. So what's our least favorite part of this movie? I'm going to go first because I don't know if I agree. I, I, I actually just, just proved this. So the movie after Goro dies? So why did Sonya become depowered? Uh, was she only brought to the tournament so she could be killed easily? I'm not sure. Yeah, that right. is a okay. that's a question for the director and the writer of this movie to be like. I mean, I, I have a theory, and again, I think I will talk through it. But let, what's your least favorite part? Uh, my least favorite part: the acting and the script and the dialogue, because it everybody has just cringe-inducing scenes. Like Raiden, I think he makes a really awkward joke and then does a he he he, and it's like that's just the, kidding. The, that, <laughs> yeah. That's the best take that's yeah. the best take it's like how many takes yeah, okay. did you take one it's like holy christ guys and then just to hear like and sometimes kano like i like him as an actor but he kind of is like and it plays to the performance and i'll let that slide but it's like sometimes he just slurs out his words while he's eating and you're like i get that that would be what the character would do but you're trying to enunciate and not just clearly on take two or three of this and you're just trying to feel out the scene and then Paul Anderson called cut and he was like, but I didn't think I was done. That wasn't even really all that great of a take, but I'll just move on. Cause the director's happy. And I feel like, yeah, there's so many of those scenes where just like all the characters just kind of are acting dumb, acting goofy, acting really wooden and, yep. and just the, the script and the dialogue. So I get when he's like, Oh, you know, just, just improv it or whatever. It's like, AKA, I didn't write it correctly and the writer didn't write it correctly and I don't want to interpret it correctly. So just throw something up there. And if I think it feels right, I'll stick with it. And it's like, that's but not it's, directing. It's, it's weird. Cause it's like almost like, so Christopher Lambert I, I, as Raiden, I agree is kind of like, eh. but apparently he flew himself out to Thailand on his own dime. He paid for like the wrap up party out of his pocket so they could have like nicer stuff, right? Like buff up the, the budget. Uh, I think Lyndon Ashby and Robin Sue do a really good job, and they're pretty funny together. Like, Lyndon Ashby kind of holds up, right? Like, when he does things, he's like, when uh, Cage th- or Liu Kang throws his bags in the water, he's like, well, I'm glad I didn't ask him to park the car. <laughs> like, that's a really funny take, right? Like, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, like, oh, yeah. he gets he's it. He's great. But yeah, uh, and I think, he's like, clearly Robin an Shoe, actor. Yeah. Uh, and, and, like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, it is one of those things. Yeah, like, least favorite part... Uh, yeah, like maybe Christopher Lambert's performance as Raiden. Like Raiden should be more mystical, and he just seems like he's a weird Frenchman that's kicking around with white hair. You know, uh, how about a criticism? What's what's your final criticism of this movie? Um, I think my oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be nice about it. I think my criticism is that this movie wasn't. It's not actually going to be a criticism it's about the movie. It's going to be about how it's interpreted. This movie shouldn't have been called Mortal Kombat because it almost added a stigma to it. So people will just see it and assume, oh, because the video game movie, it's kind of like cheesy, not great. It's like, no, this is actually a good movie. Like 
there's parts to it that's very entertaining. The set and the story is good. Like, it's very watchable. Like, it's quick in and out. I think it's like 92, 93 minutes. Like, it is a breeze to watch. It is a Sunday jaunt. It is a nice little, like, cup of tea. It is mm-hmm. like a more junky flavored kind of cup of tea, but it's not like the high end quality, but it's, it's good. It's watchable. I think, but I think my, the criticism is advertising this as like a video game movie. It's just like, especially considering how many video game movies are just shit. It just almost feels like a slur to call this a video game movie instead of just being like, cause people will just be like, Oh, that's a video game movie and not be like, not some movie based on a video game. Not because we have movies based on yeah. books. We don't call them book films. That's stupid. Yeah, that's true. And we don't like, yeah, yeah, we do call them comic book movies and stuff, but it's like, again, why don't we just call these like movies based on comic books? Are you really like, but it, it, it's like the older generation having to like, Oh, we got to classify this. Cause not, this isn't, this isn't stuff that would ever be considered for, you know, awards or anything like that. It's like, no, I think that this movie probably is better than some movies that won an award that year. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I will go to bet for the, the, the sound and the, the costumes and the, yeah. and the set. Like, I, I think that like the world that they create is amazing. So, yeah. But that's, uh, and yeah, like my criticism is this is a really terrible movie. Like from that point of view, right? The the acting isn't yeah. great. The dialogue is eh. The the plot, like the plot, actually does not make sense, right? So like, what are the rules of this tournament? Is there a bracket? Uh, does Johnny Cage beating Scorpion and Goro kind of mean anything, right? Like I, I don't understand. It just seems like randomness. Uh, what are the you know where's the the nuances of the movie? Uh, so those are the kind of things where. I, I think that's like the biggest criticism of this film. And you have to understand that it's not a movie. It's a video game that's being shown to you via a cinematic experience, right? So if we want to get into my praise, and I guess I'll just get into it right now, uh, is this movie is literally the video game. So you, you you basically, the beginning is the introduction, right? So you meet your three main characters, kind of your fighters, the guys you get to choose from through the experience, right? So you get a little bit of time with Luke Kang, a little backstory. Uh, you get to meet Sonya Blade and you get to meet Johnny Cage. So they then get to the island. We then kind of like meet the bad guys, the stakes. And then once the tournament starts, it's just like the video game. And it kind of says, who do you want to fight as first? Well, I'm going to fight as Liu Kang. Cool, great. Here's a guy you fight. Then the next fight, I want to pick from my three main characters. Ah, let's be Sonya Blade for this one. Let's fight Kano, right? Uh, then you're going to be Johnny Cage and fight Scorpion. Then you're going to be uh, Liu Kang and you're fighting Katana. But you get kind of like a weird cutscene or something like that right then he fights sub-zero and then all of a sudden goro shows up and you're like oh because he's the main bad guy and johnny cage beats him right so it's kind of it's kind of like if you think of it as like pick which character you want to do this fight with just like you would in the video game that's how it works so really it, it's literally how mortal Kombat. you have a column of fighters and you just have to climb up them right is that not genius yes and no i mean so then as- and then you're, and, you're, and then, you're making excuses for essentially everything the director failed at because <laughs> the but, director's but, job is to have that through line and explain the setup and the characters and the motivations. But I think he was trying to be a little bit more creative instead of doing like the boring plot and making the tournament, which is what I wanted. Right. And that's why that was my criticism before this. Uh once you kind of realize and take a step back and like, oh, that's what he was trying to do. And like, it's art. It's not a classic cinema experience, right? Because I don't think this game would work as a classic cinema experience and having an actual tournament and stuff. They kept it through. So then uh, Shang Tsung says, you're allowed to fight Goro, Mr. Johnny Cage, but I get to fight... I, I get to fight whoever I want in the finals, right? That's what he is. So he grabs Sonya Blade, who he's had a weird obsession with the entire movie. And that's why he brought Kano, because he knew it would draw Sonya in. And he has like this weird, almost like fetish for Sonya Blade. So when he takes her away and he has her chained up at the end, uh, and they're even like, oh, you know what? He actually even can't fight Sonya Blade unless, of course, he she accepts his challenge. So it's like, is Sonya weak enough or does he have an actual thing for Sonya because like it kind of seems like maybe he has a thing for Sonya Blade which then makes sense uh, and then obviously there's like that final battle between him and Liu Kang right and it's kind of that that's the game and how would the game end it ends with kind of a goofy like oh I'm more big and bad so I think my praise is this is the best 
video game movie maybe ever because it's literally a video game on the big screen. It doesn't work as a movie, but I think it works really well as a damn video game. So there you go. There's my final praise and how I watched it last night. I was like, this is freaking genius. That's fair. That's fair. I don't know. I see. I seen I've watched Street Fighter 2, the animated movie, and it has like almost the exact same plot. Um, Shocker to fighting franchises having the same story. But yeah. when I compare that movie and it's kind of like, yeah, the whole thing is like, there's a tournament in Street Fighter. It's like, yeah, but you don't really, that's less important. It's not yeah. like the the important thing should be the character conflicts. And in this movie, the, the character conflict is not there because Shao Kahn isn't a villain. He's a hammy guy that has some lines. Like, what does he do that's villainous? He's like, aha, I captured Sonya Blade. But I actually can't make her do anything. Uh, but like, he does like, have like, a line that like, says, if you don't fight me, I will do something. Like, he does have a, a vague threat that makes it sound like she's probably going to have to accept this challenge. Right. right? So. But, like, so those two characters aren't really even in conflict. Because, right, he kind of has, like, a weird obsession with her. And she has yeah. had zero connection with him and zero conversations or anything to do with him. Where then you look at, like, um, what's his name? Um, Liu Kang. And you, like, look at Liu Kang and him. And you're like, oh, you killed his son and there's his brother. And there's that one scene that's like, your soul will be mine. Super hamming over the top. And they play it, like, 20 times. Because mm-hmm. that's that's the only character. Those the only character interactions throughout the entire movie. That's the conflict. But like, what and, is and, the and, character? And, and, well, no, and that's that's the shit. That's the whole crap of this fucking movie. Is like, yeah, the director has one job, and it's to convey the conflict across. The conflict in the movie is Shao Kahn killed Liu Kang's brother, and it essentially yes. just ruined his life and made him like leave leave like his order and all that stuff and yeah but why did he kill his brother because he was in the last tournament yeah but and again the tournament take would, place would, every like 500 years no it's like every 15 or so so okay. it, it was okay. like it was his brother and essentially his brother went to the tournament and he was supposed to go but he didn't go and then he mm. did. so he feels responsible but how do i know these things um, I paid attention to every little fucking line that happened and I overanalyzed it because they didn't do that at all in the movie because the director was yeah. so busy just wanting to wrap things up that he was like, you know what? Just improv- improvise your lines. Like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And it's just like, oh. like that's, not, that's not an Artur. That's, that's a dude that got a paycheck and was energetic to work. And you're like, no, that's, that's a guy that wanted a paycheck. Like, and that's the thing that kind of oh. like like if you could just take Paul Anderson out of this and take fucking any half-ass reasonable director, you you just get a you instantly improve this movie because mm. all of a sudden the story mm. works and mm. characters should have motivations and and like see this is what oh, I, I wanted to do and I think that this movie is structured wrong. You should. and that's oh and like I agree like I, I I echo up until my viewing last night where I kind of came at it from a different view as a movie I think this movie sucks as a video game being shown to you in a cinematic way it is like almost flawless because in the original Mortal Kombat game what the hell are the backstories of the characters you don't know that you get one little blurb that's it you get one little blurb and that's it and you have to go play the game and you're like I guess and you get different endings and you're like huh that doesn't give you a lot, right? So from a like a narrative point of view, Mortal Kombat's awful, right? Like the first Mortal Kombat game kind of sucks from a narrative point of view. Same with the movie, kind of sucks. But in terms of the game, like this movie is the game. And I'm like, that is really freaking cool. Yeah. But you're right, like it, it's missing those plot points. And I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. I'm not saying I'm like, oh no, there is a backstory. Like it makes, it, no, it, it, it's dumb. It's missing those big beats. But I think the... <sighs> point of making this movie as we saw with the next one is just show the video game right like the producers wanted to just show the video game and they showed us the video game so maybe i don't know i feel like this i will always say this that i never thought that this was the best video game movie um i've always thought this is just a good entertaining 
watch. It's kind of like a shut your brain off and just watch a martial mm-hmm. arts film. Um, and it just, this movie has always just, I've wanted it to be better than it was, but it's just not. It's watchable. But is there really any depth to this movie? I and like, I don't think yeah. so. I, I think this I, I is think just like this is just a fart to get a freaking paycheck. Somewhere I read when I was kind of doing or watching a video somewhere that uh, Robin Shu was a little disappointed because there was a pull backstory between him, a love story between him and Katana that kind of worked out, and they ended up cutting most of those scenes. So I think somewhere they made a choice to say we want more fighting. So there was more fights, like that scorpion fight was a reshoot. That's why it does seem kind of like it's just out of nowhere. Uh, the choreography is there. But they, they wanted these long, elaborate fight scenes rather than story. So I think somewhere there was more plot, dialogue, development, and they cut it for more fighting. Because mm-hmm. think of how long Johnny Cage fights Scorpion for, right? Like five minutes? That's a lot of plot development you could get, right? And, like, these love scenes that are cut out. And I'm sure there was, like, they basically trimmed it down to say, we're going to have maximal fighting, maximal techno music, and minimal plot. And that was a, that was an active decision that someone made along the way in the editing room, not mm. when they were filming this movie. No, I, uh, it was 100% the director's move. Because you put forth a movie that you intend to make, and that just speaks volumes <laughs> to, like, every Paul Anderson movie he's ever made is uh, not necessarily so, though. Like, story yep. is such a byproduct of what i actually want to film and i want to film in the resident evil movies my wife running around looking hot and i'm just going to film that for 90 minutes and then slap five minutes of exposition in there somewhere and it's like that's the entire resident evil series and it's like oh, and, oh. and now i look at this movie and you're like oh my god it's the same fucking formula he just films action scenes he sh- he's a second unit director he doesn't. He he doesn't know how to be a first unit director. He doesn't even know how to to lead or create. And, and he has zero interest in filming those scenes. So they probably filmed it, took had one or two, three takes, and were like, "Okay, cool, can it?" And then he probably just well, so tossed it because he was like, "I want to get to filming everybody kicking ah. and punching people because that's way more interesting." But the fact, actually, I think a different director directed the scorpion fight scene. So the fact that they it, had there the, should, like like. like, the, like it, and, that's and the like, second movie. That's you do the second this, unit director. But thing. sometimes you do this though, where you you say, "Oh, it's the director." Some like yes and no. If it's the director's like vision, but if a director's brought onto a project, especially like this, there's a producer that's controlling everything. At a certain point, the producer says, "We need more fighting. We need less story." So two things happened: the story elements were awful. Like there was no character development, and it was awful. And they looked at it and they're like, this is a waste of time. Just cut it out and make them fight more. Right, and that's and the director at that point he's like, okay, that, like it's it's off my shoulders. I a, can't do anything. I'm not going to fight. Director right? is like, okay, a good director ah. says no. I should. This makes sense, and this is why. Let me talk reason to you, think, Mr. Producer. I think Spielberg and Nolan can say those things, but if you've no, done like think, this, if this is your if first you have big budget any sort movie, of spine as a director, that's your job is to direct the movie. The producer mm. produces it. So his job is to market it, get everybody on set, get everybody where they need to be. As your job as the director is to actually make that movie a coherent vision. That's your job. Uh, but to be like, eh, as, uh, you want this, Mr. Mr. Yes Man? It's like, you want a Yes Man director? It's like, cool, go work at Disney. It's like, that's that's a, like uh, such a slap in the yeah. face for all like actual good directors. Because... No, you can't. It's not just the Nolans and the Spielbergs. Those guys have way more power than everybody else because they can say, actually, I want to redo half this movie because X, Y, Z, not just like I want to actually reshoot this scene. Like there's so many directors in the world that actually like will just be like, no, no, we're going to redo this. We're going to go back and we're just going to retake this. We need to take some reshoots on this. And reshoots happen in almost every single movie. It's actually fairly rare that reshoots don't happen. But, yeah, but like a whole fight scene with Scorpion. Oh, should 100%. Not be a, oh, yeah, because it's a, right? essentially it's a second unit thing. Like you have yeah. your main unit that's working around with your main cask, and you have your second unit doing all the filler and the setup shots or doing the action scenes. So, I mean, like, just speaking of like shows we've watched, though, if you are a pain in the ass, they just replace you with Ron Howard on Solo. 
right? Like it, it's one of those things. Like if you can't get the job done, we'll bring in someone who does, right? Absolutely. So there's, there's a we point want where a yes man, you, where you're fired, and as the director, you go, okay, well, I'm going to take. I, you already paid me. Yeah, <laughs> Pace, we, at, increase your budget and hire somebody else and take my name off the project because you aren't listening I also, to how we should be presented. I also feel like no one came into this being like, we have to create a compelling narrative experience. It's like, eh, show the game on the screen and that's close enough. And like, yeah, and that's, they, that's, that's what they the did. absolute attitude that they right, had. Like, it was, it was, no, we don't really give a fuck about this property. We're just here for a paycheck. And it's well, like, they, I mean, they, I think they improv- did care improvise about Improvise your lines, just improvise it. It's like, is this a fucking comedy? No, it's an I, action movie. Okay, cool. Then why am I improvising my lines? I, I mean, you'd have to look at the script. Like the script might suck, right? Like, Anderson might be sitting there looking at the script and he's like, guys, if you want to play around with this a little bit, like I encourage you because whoever wrote this doesn't care about this movie. Yeah. So let's not care about his script, right? And but, like in my mind, that that's a good director, right? No, but that's what that's 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 just a part of filmmaking. That happens during the the, the, the scene reading where a character mm-hmm. will say, Well, can I actually say it like this? It's the same sentence, but I it just it works better in my head when I say it out loud. 100%. And, and that happens in every single movie. That's not a that's that's a screen that's a script reading thing where it's just like, ah. hey, can I just rework this? That's not like, oh, we're on scene and all, all set up and the camera's on you. Just figure it out. Like yeah, that, is, that is the fucking. Ugh, that's if such a, a Paul Anderson thing. Is like, god damn it, this man hasn't made like fucking one good movie and he's made more money in in like one fucking year than I will ever make in my lifetime. It's just yeah, such a it's such a such a shit show. It's like really, well, really. Sh- this guy's this this terrible director that has no spine and just is bad at doing things. Nailed it. He, he gets a movie to theaters. He says yes. He's he's nice and he makes more money than you. So who's really wrong here? That's yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, Tyson is trying to critically analyze a dumb video game movie. So well, no, I'm I. Whenever I watch anything, I will always critically analyze it. If I watch the news, oh. I will critically analyze it. If I watch and, a YouTube and like, video, I will do that. Because it's like, in my mind, if you are putting forth material, filmed material, and, you know, show, don't tell, all that stuff, and then your story is essentially just what works out to be just fight scenes, I'm going to yeah. shit on it because you have one job. It's like, tell a story, don't just show me fight but, scenes because if i want to watch but, fight scenes i would just watch clips of fight scenes but like that's what martial art movies are is they're fight scenes right like if you watch blood sport it's a bunch of really well choreographed fight scenes if you yep. want to watch a like a, a in-depth like in-depth movie watch like the karate kid the karate kid there's more of a backstory and it's less fighting but you know what i mean like blood sport is it's a martial arts movie, right? Like Chuck Norris stars in martial arts movies where there's lots of cool action and the plot is light. Right. And, and it's, it's like a light popcorn film. Right. right? So that, that's but, all they, that's okay. all they're making. And, here. and, and, and I'll, I'll put it, I'll, I'll reverse it. Was there any weight when Artie died? Oh, I, I was devastated. You when were Artie devastated died. when that random character who's no one's had any conversation with before that, that scene. Where I he think dies. Art, I think Art Lean is, no, they said that he, he introduced him. He's like, hey, I'm Art Lean. He's like, oh, I saw you at that tournament in France. He's like, you were really good. And he's like, oh, not as good as your movies or something. And he's like, oh, cool, Art Lean. And they have dinner together. Yes. Well, when he died, I could care less. I, in fact, oh, I actually was, was like waiting for him to die. Um, I was like, oh, whereas in Bloodsport, when his buddy dies, that has a way bigger impact because you're like, this son of a bitch now needs to get revenge. Like, I actually, like, I feel a mad. Because I mean, Bloodsport is a bad example because it's like an elite movie. level that's, martial yeah, that's, arts. And that's a good movie. Like, I mean, it, we're, we're, we're yeah. comparing we're comparing yeah. a D to a like up like up. Like, yeah. We have to find an another a. D. Like, yeah, exactly. We got to find some like some shitty movie but, that we're just like that was just you know it is what it is. Yeah. it was made Chuck for, Norris Power Fist or something. There's probably a movie called that, and you'd watch it, and it's just him like fighting and doing a bunch of like cool moves. You'd be like, oh, oh yeah, okay, actually, Mortal Kombat does hold up in the martial arts world, right? Like, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess. Yes, and I'm I'm looking at a movie that essentially was schlock, and being like, why didn't they make it better? It's like because it's a schlock, idiot. It's like, I, I, yeah, and I mean, they had twelve like, million dollars. What, what are you expecting? Are you are you serious? Uh, <laughs> like nothing gets done for twelve million dollars these days. Actually, I would be interested, nice. and I'm sad that we didn't watch the newest Mortal Kombat because I'd be serious how the newest one, right? So a reboot, they put more money behind it compares to the original because i bet you the original is better 
Oh, I guarantee the original's better because the new one I hear right? isn't very good. Well, that's what I mean. So, like, it's obviously just not a very like it's not a very strong narrative property, right? So it's <sighs> and, 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 is what and, it is. and but unfortunately, and it, it is like there's there is really cool things in the Mortal Kombat world and more. <sighs> And universes and outworld and underworld like there's so many cool things going on but you actually in 1995 to... was there though i i don't know which games were out right then i'd have to look it up i th- me i think it was they literally based it on the first arcade game like yeah. i don't even know if they based it on the super nintendo like when they started i think they based it on the arcade game so yeah and you're like, probably that's, right that's... and like yes like They've eventually so you're looking at it, it. And, but you're looking eyes, at it as a like, fan. Like I was in, in reference to the 2021 movie that just came out. Oh like, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. You, you there is lore and cool yeah. things in this property, but they 100%. and like don't as a fan of the series that has like two to to eleven or whatever they're at now, right? There's a lot of lore. There's cool games. The new one should have a story. When you have just the arcade game, make a story on an arcade game, and you'd be like, uh, like make an interesting story of Donkey Kong. Tyson, I'm going to give you all the money in the world. Make an interesting story of Donkey Kong. The original Donkey Kong. You're a plumber. And you got to save a... You go. You'd be like, uh... <laughs> oh, no. Right? That's, that, that's kind of my point. I'm like, Actually, you know, I think you can. I think you can. Because they kind of do it like a Hardcore Henry. Do it all first person from Mario's perspective. And it's kind of like a, a, a raid. But he's got to get to the top of the building to, to get to Donkey Kong. Right. So the whole yeah, thing luck, is luck. essentially just like a one long. You, you could probably do it in one long shot and use it like they did in Birdman with like inter, inter uh, splicing with like the camera shakes. I bet you you could do it. I bet you you could do it. You know, because you can make. And this is what drives me nuts: is you can make a good movie out of anything. It can literally be anything, and you can make a fucking amazing movie out of it. But do people actually do that? No, no. People who make movies are dumb. And they make crap that just is stupid. But I might just be still just, be better because watching that entire King Kong versus Godzilla movie was just a waste of my life. And they had Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 out at that time. So not two, not, three, not, no. not a lot to actually work with in story-wise. But. Yeah, there you go. And like at a certain point, you're like, we could just show every character in these games. But like that would be kind of stupid just to have a random guy show up in a scene just to die, right? Like, shouldn't we maybe explain a little bit about them? And it's like... But they do yeah, that. No. Yeah, what, what kind of a movie would just randomly show video game characters for, for no reason? Anyways, uh, so there. I, I did not think we'd talk 45 minutes on the first Mortal Kombat movie, but I know, I know. we did it. Well, and I we think... still have another one to go. So, <laughs> Fuck. Which is what I, I like. I don't understand. Like, I understand, like, you trying to make a stance and, like, be the critical. But you know that we're talking about Annihilation right now, don't you? Well, like, no. So, now we're talking about Annihilation. So this is the movie yeah. where it's like, yeah. Okay. So, like, we have two sides of a coin. And Tyson's looking at the heads and being like, man, fucking heads is stupid. I hate it. Not knowing that the shittiest fucking tails is on the other. Like, he knows it's coming. So I'm like, why are you why are you trying to stand on this hill? Like, Mortal Kombat, in comparison, is one of the best movies I ever saw. Because now we're talking about Mortal Kombat, Annihilation. It was directed by, because anyone can just direct these movies and make a fine movie without any skill whatsoever. John R. Leonetti? see how he does it was distributed by new line cinema uh released november 21st 1997 runtime was 95 minutes its budget was 30 million dollars it box it box office was 51.3 million dollars did not make as much uh cast uh we saw returning robin shu as Liu kang and talisa soto as katana newcomers included sandra hessa sonia james ramar as raiden chris conrad as james or johnny cage so john r leonetta He's a cinematographer. He, he's directed like a handful of movie, and essentially he's they're they're all dog shit. Um, hmm. But yeah, so he's a cinematographer. So oh, essentially also, they got they got rid of a guy that said, "Hey, wouldn't this might be?" Oh no, okay, sorry, I even said anything. Yeah, you're completely correct. To a guy that's like, "Yes, man, yes, 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 yes." I'll just film exactly as you say. Yes, yes, yes. And it's like, ugh, this is why cinematographers make the worst directors. Because yep. they, they, they know how to film a scene, but they don't know why they're filming it. Uh, 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 yes, and sometimes characters just appear and introduce themselves and then disappear. And you're like, oh, that makes sense. Sure, why not? Uh, I was also and... going to compliment you at some point. because, Well, actually, two things. Uh, I Will Steal Your Soul, uh, the guy's line from the first movie, later became into the game. So the Emperor or the Chao Kong never said that. But after his performance, they liked it so much they included it. So that was kind of neat. Uh, and Tyson's favorite character, always Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage is kind of cool. 
Like, he has fun sunglasses, and he has some fun, like, one-liners, and he's kind of goofy. Uh, yeah. Tyson was always, like, weirdly really cool as a kid. He always, like, like he had the best sense. Like, the, he, there was a toy line. He could pick you the best toy, the most, the most popular toy. He knew what it was. Like, he always had this really weird, uh, innate skill of picking, like, what's the coolest thing? I don't know if he still has that now, but as a, as a child, he always, like, he could pick out the, the coolest character, like, who's the most popular. He knew it just by looking at, like, the box art or, like, watching one episode of X-Men. He's like, yeah, Wolverine's the coolest. No, I'm like, no, he's not. So he's always very strangely cool. I was going to compliment you at some point when oh, we talked well, about Johnny you. Cage. And then you just, I don't know, you just started. Then I, then I started being... shitting on that movie. I, uh, and I was just sorry, like. Just like, yeah, I was well, just like. I, I was like well, really rubs me the wrong gotta, way, poor Paul Anderson. Like I know he's probably he's probably the sweetest, nicest man. Never heard a bad thing. Him and Mila Jovovich have been together for a really long time, yeah. and that speaks volumes. But it's just like I want Mortal Kombat the first movie to be so good, and it's just like the I don't know. Only iteration I've seen that I think would be kind of cool uh, is there was a film series or like a web series, and it was these detectives, and they were like checking out this crime scene and it's like this destroyed classroom and there's like this acid blood everywhere and they're like oh there's this underground fighting scene called mortal combat going on and there's this guy called scorpion and he throws like acid at his victims or something or lizard and he throws acid at his victims and it's like kind of this gritty underground fight ring through the city and it was like real life and i was like that would work in mortal combat but it, it wouldn't make sense in the game you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i don't know anyways yep. anyways yeah yeah um, okay. Anyways, and, back and you know to this what? great I, movie. Back to this great movie. Um, on the topic of Johnny Cage, you know, I think as long as Johnny Cage is around, this movie's gonna be all right. <laughs> all right, I'm glad you got that joke in there. All right, so the development details of this game. This game is loosely based on 1995's Mortal Kombat 3. There were plot elements from Mortal Kombat 4, but they got cut. The original, uh, the original attracted casual, or they originally attracted casual fans. Whereas the sequel set its sight on gamer fans. Okay. The goal of this movie was more. More fighting, more special effects, more outworld, more everything. Filming began in 1996 and took place on an island off of Wales, London, Jordan, and Thailand. Tony Jaa, from Ungback fame, was the stunt double for Robin Shu. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And on to our terrible plot summary because there wasn't a lot of meat and potatoes in those development details for some reason the emperor shows up and says he is going to er merge outworld and earth realm in six days he also kills johnny cage oh no <laughs> we're in for no. a rough time now kids oh okay <laughs> but I'm, su I'm sure it can't be that bad so our trio of heroes take off Sonya meets her friend Jax and walks around Liu kang learns to become an animorph and raven gets a haircut and becomes mortal the heroes then meet up, travel to Outworld, fight the Emperor's goon, Liu Kang out Animorphs the Emperor, and the day is saved. Oh my goodness. Yep. Did I miss anything? No, that's the movie, that's, right? Uh, I, think you're, I think you put too much words in there. You might want to trim that down a bit. Well, I, think, I had to include Animorphs. I was like, yeah, but other than no, that, I know. Like, it's... It's like so goofy. <sighs> Stupid is what it is. It's just absolutely just, ugh. Yeah. 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 Well, if I was gonna, I have, I'm, you know, I'm kind of glad I got all the bitching out of me, so I can kind of just sit back and just chuckle at how much of a dumpster fire this is. It, like I've always hated this movie. I watched it as a kid. I hated it. And like, if we rented it, like Tyson once rented it for a I sleepover, always rented and, I got, this movie. <laughs> and I got mad at my mother. I got mad at her. Like upset as a child. I don't know. Like how old? Are, how old am I? Like twelve? That you would spend money and give more money to this because it was that terrible. Like I've been on that high horse forever. That's why I'm, I can't understand. It. I'm like Tyson. Like the first one is whatever. Like this one is just awful. So let's get into our review. We got to talk about our favorite part. So Tyson, what is your favorite part of Mortal Kombat Annihilation? Oh, all of it. It's all just so good. Um, yeah. No. Um... Hmm. I would say the improved characters, but that's a lie. Um, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. my favorite part is the. It's a good question. It's a very good question. Yeah. No, I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with Katana. I have to go with something. So I'm like, okay. she's she's pretty to look at, and she's running around, and she's a main character now, and not just in like three scenes. Uh, until she gets captured by Scorpion, but yeah, let's not talk about that. Uh, okay, so my favorite part is Robin Shu. He kicked ass in the first movie. Like, 
I think he does a good job. He's not. A, is, is he the best actor? No, but is he a great martial artist on film? Oh yeah, absolutely. He does like it, 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 it's it's great. It's awesome. Uh, and was the only original character to return. Now I don't count Katana from the first one uh, because she was kind of a side character, but now she's a main character. So like, eh. Uh, and though the actress was a Bond girl, so whatever her name is, something Soto. Uh, Talisa Soto was a Bond girl. She was the girl from 1989's *License to Kill*. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't make that connection until you, till you, till I saw you wrote that, and I was like, "Oh yeah, she is in that movie, isn't she?" Yeah, and, and I said, "I hope." I, I don't know what he's doing nowadays, but I hope he retired a happy man because he did amazing work in these two dumb movies. Great job. Yeah. Uh, and then, side note, Bridget Wilson did not return in this film because she wanted to be in I Know What You Did Last Summer, and Lyndon Ashby turned it down after reading the script. <laughs> God, I love him so much. <laughs> I, I like. I like. I don't know if I liked Johnny Cage beforehand, but like finding out that tidbit, I like, tidbit, and like watching the first one, I was like, Lyndon Ashby is is Johnny Cage is the best part of Mortal Kombat. Like, just hands down, like. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, what is he up to? What did he go on to go do? Because uh, Batman clearly had a good head on his shoulders, had comedic timing. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, he he was the best part of the other movie. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, so let's say what's our most mot- notable scene or part. So like I said before, like probably a half hour ago, uh, it's kind of like, what is the part that you think about, right? So you haven't watched this movie in years, and you're like, oh, I remember that part of that movie. So uh, seeing the characters from the game on the big screen, they do lots of that, right? Randomly just Rain is there, Purple Rain, and you're like, oh, that's neat. And Ermac, why not? Uh, Sub-Zero showing up. Oh, yeah. that was cool, right? Uh, the Jax explosion, where he kind of like jumps through the air. Like, that didn't look terrible. Uh, when he rips off his arms, and he's like, I'm strong without them. Raiden's dumb haircut... Or when Sindel yells and destroys the cliffs. Um, I think the most memorable part is also the most tragic. It's the Johnny Cage death to me. Because mm, that was yeah. the scene that like, every, like in the theater we were all just like, what? <laughs> like our favorite character. Like maybe not your favorite characters, but it's like, this, this we're not in for a fun ride on this one. Yeah, that was no, that, was that moment that was yeah. like, it's like, yep. Where Johnny Cage dies, I just uh, and, mentally like, checked out. And Tyson made a joke earlier. He's like, if he's if he, as long as Johnny Cage is in the movie, we'll be all right. I kind of feel the same way when I watched this movie the first time. I was like, Johnny Cage is dead. I was like, I'm done. Like, yeah. I don't want to watch this anymore. Why no, would I kill him? And, and he's dead in the first five minutes. So you're like, you got yeah. five minutes of being like, there he is. Oh, I know what's coming. And then he dies, the and you're like, and he even like but, drops the shadow kick and everything, and it's just like, no, I'm counting you dead. It's like. Uh, and like, think of all the stuff that he missed out on. He could have walked around. He, he could missed Raiden's haircut. He he could have fought a character from the game. He could have said something. Like, it, wow. Or he could he could have fought that one chick, so she didn't just have to randomly die after doing the same thing twice. That for <sighs> she Goro or heck her name is, where oh. she. Like that that scene is so funny. Shiva, I think it's Shiva. So she, yeah. apparently, when she got the the actress, when she got the part, so there's like a female Gora character. She's got the four arms. Uh, the prosthetics actually wouldn't work, uh, and the animatronics were like malfunctioning. So she was guaranteed a couple of fight scenes. Uh, they didn't work. So essentially, she just jumps in the middle of the room, and they drop a cage on her, and she dies. Uh, and that was their way around, rather than like trying to troubleshoot how to get that like character to actually function in a fight so you know you could have just wrote out that character you could have just not i mean just pay her to not be in the film yeah uh how about what's your least favorite part i think we both got the same one on this one <laughs> the script oh my goodness the just the every word that of dialogue that comes out of every person's mouth is so not spoken by a human being so the part, the point of the plot move, the first movie, I don't know, like, it's they want to stop the Emperor from winning the 10th Mortal Kombat in a row, because if they can't, Outworld and Earthrealm will merge. So in this movie, he's just like, fuck it, I'm going to do it anyways, I don't care. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like, oh yeah, the I'm, I'm just going to ignore that and rule. And then it's, you guys, I know you just beat Shao, Shao Kahn, but he, or Shao Song, but he's not as, he's not as strong as the Emperor, so you have to go train and find yourself. So let's, let's just go and walk around for a bit, and then we'll meet up and fight. That's the movie. Yeah. And even when they're talking, like, I think I like the fighting more in this movie, but, and when they're talking, it's the worst part. I'm like, who are you? 
Like, what? Are you, why are you talking? I'm like, oh, this is going to happen. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah, or Sindel, it's like, too bad you will die. And you're like, no, no, don't, yeah. no, why? Yeah, why? yeah, yeah, yeah. Mother? Yeah. It's like, I thought you were, <laughs> you're alive. It's like, too bad you will die or something. Something not good, and you're just like, no, you rewrite that line. You rewrite yeah. these. Who's writing yeah. this? You bad, you bad. Yeah. Um, not good. And I mean, okay, we'll we'll keep going. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. Yeah, let's just, at this point, let's just get it over. Pull up the bandit. All right. So criticism. So I feel like they didn't care about this movie or the game series. The effects look terrible. Uh, you can see the white lines around the actors on the green screen. The writing is terrible. Does any character have an arc? Uh, they just kind of shove characters down your throat because they appeared in the game, but their appearances don't mean anything. Uh, like, why wouldn't Sub-Zero stick around and be a good guy? He just is like, oh, I'm his brother, and like, I'm going to help you. But then he just he turns around, and he's just gone. I hate this movie. There's my criticism. Yeah, I agree on everything you said. It looks like shit. Characters don't know what they're doing, what they're saying. Nothing matters. And we just wander around for 95 minutes awful absolutely just awful this is the worst movie we've ever watched on side quest cinema which is actually we've watched some pretty good movies like we kind of hit and miss or like picky right but like hands down this is the i hate it yeah no um this one's up there with the star wars movie or some of the star wars movies for me because it's like some of those like those movies are dumpster fires and i hate every minute of being around them and watching them this is at least like 95 minutes not like three hours yeah so it's like you know it's it sucks and this is probably the most unwatchable 95 minutes that you'll ever suffer through but um you might see some characters from a game if you like the game you're like hey there's that person that's that's cool yep don't know who they are and uh actually the funny thing is one of my few praises going into what's what I like the final praises of this movie. Some of the characters were really cool, like uh, Cyborg, the Cyborg one. The, what's his name? Yeah. Um, Smoke or Van Trax or whatever. Yeah, or Noob or Cybot. I think it's Cybot. Noob Cybot. No, Noob Cybot is the black. Right. Yeah, that's, that's the one that that switches back and forth. Uh huh. Hmm. Yeah, it's like Smoke and Cyrax or something? Yeah, I think it's Cyrax. Yeah. Cyrax, Mortal. Yeah, Cyrax. Yeah, because yeah, he, he's yellow, and then he turns red when he blows up, and that's kind of like a little Easter egg for the mm-hmm. like the other character. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, this, ge- this, this movie is literally, here's stuff from the game we're just going to show you. You'll be happy because, like, they're there. Like the centaur man, he's just—he doesn't do anything. He's just yeah. well, like m- maybe like, maybe you are right, Mick. Maybe they literally in the first movie they were just like, let's make it more like just like scene after scene after scene of an of a video game. Yes, and they were trying to do that, but they didn't know why they were doing it. So maybe I, I should take back some of my criticism, Paul Anderson, because really it's probably the same producer, same production house. Yeah, mm-hmm. the only real change is the director. So was having at least Paul Anderson being around to be like, no, maybe we should just like have some structure and some things like, yeah, characters are going to fight, but at least maybe say something yeah. before the fight, not just like, be like, what if, what if Shao Tsung shows an interest in Sonya Blade early on in the movie? And then like, maybe that pays off later. It doesn't, but like, at least there was a thing in this one. It's just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Here's Cyrax. He's fighting yeah, you guys. Jade, Jade's going to show up. She's probably not evil. Yeah. Okay, good. Yep, 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 yep. This... And, and then you guys are going to fight in the mud Hey, at Scorpion, some point. get over here! Remember, he was in the first game? Yeah. And then, like, he just goes away and, like, skills... And, and Sub-Zero, just... is, is he's he's around, but this is his brother. But, like, also, be really cool if Sub-Zero was just... Like, he's a popular character. Make him what, part of the cast. But, like, no, you get Jade. Okay. Yep, 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 yeah. yep. yeah. Uh, final praise. Uh, fight scenes are okay. Uh, they reprise the awesome Mortal Kombat song, which is awesome. Robin Shu is fine. Uh, so great that I actually watched Beverly Hills Ninja after oh, watching this. Yeah. So. Oh, man. I fucking love that movie. Oh, Master Poe. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So, there you go. There's there's Mortal Kombat. We suffered through it. I don't know if we needed to. Dear 
what have we done with our lives? <laughs> you know, I think we need to touch on it. This one, like the first Mortal Kombat yeah. movie is watchable and it's good. It, uh, Whereas... I, I, yeah, it it is. Yeah, like I think they were doing something interesting. They had an intro, at least a style. They picked the style and they went with it. They're like, we're not gonna have a plot. We're just gonna show you the video game. Fine. The yeah. second one, they're like, we're just gonna show you stuff from the video game. I'm like, oh, like like the plot of the second? No, 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 no. We're just gonna literally show you stuff from the video game. Remember Bartok? He has sword hands. Look, here he is. Oh, he fell in a pit. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, oh. it's almost as if they were just trying to work out scenes to shove characters in it and then the plot was going to fall out of that where it's it's almost like if you were to make the movie wreck it ralph but you were just like no we need to get the the easter eggs and the references down first before we even figure out who our main character is it doesn't matter as long as you show sonic and bowser like no one will even literally care about the plot of this movie you don't no. need to have any emotional brevity and like you won't even make grown men cry when they rewatch it later in life so yeah exactly and i mean it's you don't want any characters to have uh, emotional weight or mm-hmm. have nope. their actions or you know uh, good or bad have them actually you know come with why and think about why they might do those things and what what's a better is. movie mortal Kombat annihilation or that part in goosebumps 2 when slappy animates ken and ryu the little figures and they fight so just that section or this whole movie um that little section because it's it's only a couple minutes and this is 95 Screen. minutes of a schlog and it's the same thing it's but they show someone, you two video game characters just and they like fought. puts these two characters that you know and then they fight each other that's it. That's it. So there you go. That's actually a really <sighs> good uh, good analogy there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, I do nice work on Goosebumps. All right. So with that, that, that wraps up this movie. I'm glad we... I, I got the first one. Fine. Second one. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. So I kind of want to buy... There's a box set. I didn't. I rented them. I kind of want to buy them now because I, I really like the first one. I think it holds up. I kind of want to watch... There's a third one called like... Mortal Kombat Legacy or something. And I'm like, I kind of want to watch the third movie now. And just be like, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I think I need to give myself a little bit of a break. But I, I was looking at, um, I was looking at buying it because they had, they had a box package at the first one, second mm-hmm. one, and third one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, ah, do I buy it? And I was like looking on Amazon. And then I was looking on um, like my, my, my Microsoft store or whatever on Xbox. And then I like, it was like, what if I look on Google and I like just brought it up on the Google like movie store yeah. and it's like it's like so much cheaper. It's like half the price of everywhere else. It's like, but then I wouldn't have nice. the physical copy. It's like, but do I actually give a shit about owning the physical copy of the Mortal Kombat movies? I own all the Resident Evil movies from our reviews from last year, and like I don't know if I care. So all right, it's, yeah, pr- probably wise, probably wise. Um, cool, awesome. So with that, that wraps that up. Uh, we're coming at you in October. We got some scary, spooky stuff. There's a game about a creepy kid that wears masks all the time. Uh, maybe a guy who is trying to battle his father, right? Uh, yeah. It's, it's going to be fun stuff, you know, in his dad's house. He's just barging in and breaking stuff down and going to go fight up, beat up his dad. So it's cool yeah. stuff. So looking, yeah. looking forward to that. I am looking forward to that immensely. It's uh, I've actually already started raiding nice. um, my dad's house. With all, cool. with all the good stuff. So, nice. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I plan as a creepy little kid with the mask. A little bit random version, but like, get that done. That's I'm looking forward to this. We, we, we're, I feel like we're down, you know, it's that home stretch to the end of the year. So, good stuff. We yeah. have to argue, we have to argue about Mortal Co- the merits of Mortal Kombat movie for 20 minutes. Why is that a recording that I now have the rest of my life? Because when the, when they reboot Mortal Kombat again and it's still bad. We can actually look back and be like, was Annihilation that bad? Oh, uh, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But like, you guys were too harsh on Annihilation. Like, that plot holds up. They they had to go fight the Emperor. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to the yeah. new new movie where they have to farm for 45 minutes. I don't know what they do in the new movie. Yeah, I don't know what they... Anyways, cool. Awesome. So with that, yeah, good stuff. Uh, talk to you guys. See you guys in a couple of weeks. Hopefully you enjoyed our mini review. Yes, James just Bond. basically was... Yeah, Sorry. James Bond. I said James Bond. We said it. He's a Bond girl. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Sorry. Sorry. I just had to make sure that everybody knows that should be coming. No time to die soon. Buy your tickets. Support movies. Yes, please. Thank you. Cool. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.